Hey everyone, so it is the start of a brand new year which means we are starting a new series as well. Over the course of this year and this series we are going to be having lots and lots of fun. We're also going to be learning lots about Jesus, so stay tuned. But for this series, we're taking things right back to the beginning. Now when I say beginning, I mean way, way, way back to the beginning where it was just God and no one else existed. Think about that. Who made God? How did God come to being in existence? All these questions are mind blowing if you try to think about it. I mean the Trinity, three in one, I just sometimes can't actually wrap my mind around all of these things. But what's crazy is that that's what makes God, God. If we as human beings could fully understand him or know everything about God, well then he wouldn't actually be God. And what's left for us to do is to stand in amazement at how big and amazing our God is because of what he has done. And over the course of this series and this service, we're going to be looking at it in a bit more detail. But for now, I'm going to need all you guys to stand up to your feet because we're going to be worshipping our King. And what's even more exciting is that we have brand new action songs. So get excited. Thank you for the sun that shines. Thank you for your light that guides. Thank you for the lamp on two. My feet. Thank you for our daily bread. Thank you for our great high priest. Thank you for the one who came to save. He says, We praise you. We praise you for you are worthy to be praised. You are. Thank you for the sun that shines Thank you for your light that guides Thank you for the lamp on to my feet
your kingdom come and you will be done are we gonna shrink back no never now's the time for us to rise the time for us to shine are we gonna shrink back no never we wanna see your kingdom come and you will be done are we gonna shrink back no Well guys, in light of what Keith was saying about how big our God is, it actually just makes sense to want to worship Him. I mean, when I think about God and how big He is, it makes me super excited and I think a natural reaction of that excitement is to worship Him. So worshiping God just makes sense. You know, we've been talking about how big God is and the fact that, you know, He has been here before time began, that nothing made God, no one made God. He has been and always has been and always will be and that's just how it is. I mean, not even scientists can fully explain how God came to be and how He created the entire world. But fact is, He did. And that is the God that we serve. That's the God who created absolutely everything that we can see, including us, which, which makes me very, very excited. Now, we're going to take a look at something very cool that's going to help us understand this idea of God being behind everything that we see. Take this out. on a farm in the Camburg and I'm with Ollie and Phoebe whose parents own this farm. They're from Amoy Riverside. So it's so cool to be with you guys today. So Phoebe, how old are you? Nine. Nine years old. And Ollie, how old are you? Eight. Eight years old. So guys, it is so cool to be on your farm. So uh, Ollie, what, what farm do your parents have? Um, dairy farm. A dairy farm. So as you can see behind me and us, there are a whole bunch of dairy cows and guys so what do dairy cows make just to help everyone out there milk farm kids. milk milk is he right yes milk so this is where your milk comes from these cows over here is what brings your milk to you so now i want to ask you guys a quick question uh phoebe what is your favorite thing to do on the farm fix the tractors uh, a did you guys hear that fix the tractors her favorite thing to do is fix the tractors that's that's amazing. And Ollie, what is your favorite thing to do on the farm? Motorbike ramping. Motorbike ramping. These kids are hardcore, guys. Now, Phoebe, can you tell us where exactly we are on your farm? We are at the dairy. Awesome, at the dairy. And what happens here at the dairy? They milk the cows. Okay, so we are at the dairy where these cows are milked. Now, Phoebe, how many cows do you guys have on your farm? Um, 3,000. Did you guys get that? 3,000 cows. So you have like a lot of pets, eh? That's, that's a lot of pets. Um, I'm not sure about you guys. There's a, there's a cow weeing on the side there. That, that noise is a cow weeing. And um, I'm not sure about you guys, but I don't think I can top 3,000 pets. How many of you guys out there can top 3,000 pets? Anyone? Uh, you, you can. You can. That's crazy. So now, Phoebe, 
what's what do your cows eat? Like, what's food for them? Like, um, what do they eat? Silage and pellets. And what else do they eat? Um, I heard they eat mealies. Do they eat mealies? Silage. Silage. That's silage. a fancy word for it. Silage. Okay, so these cows eat silage, and it's, it smells great. If you could smell what you're seeing, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Okay, so now, Phoebe, I want to ask you a question. Okay, do you do you name any of these cows? Because I mean, there's like three thousand. I mean. I, I like to name my pets, but I can imagine naming 3,000 cows must be quite a thing. So, have you guys ever named a cow? Yes, before. Okay. Yeah. What did you call your cow? Milkshake. Milkshake! Can you agree that I think milkshake is a very fitting name for a cow? Not so? Okay, so on that, I want to ask you guys a question. This is looking great. Can you? That looks amazing. What is your guys' Favorite milkshake. Phoebe, we'll start with you. Favorite milkshake. Lime. Lime. That's the green one. Okay, Ollie, your favorite milkshake. Uh, bubble gum. Bubble gum milkshake. Okay, so we got lime dressed in green, bubble gum in the blue. Very, very fitting. So, I want to know from you guys, okay, what your favorite milkshake is. So I'm gonna count down from three, and on go, I want you to shout out what your favorite flavor milkshake is i'm talking oreo bar one chocolate caramel whatever you want to do are you ready okay you guys better shout again okay so lime and bubble gum are you ready three two one go Nine. chocolate yours was uh. bubble gum yes okay so that was really cool now phoebe i want to ask you so we hear yeah the cows get milked in the dairy so now where does this milk go that gets milked from the cows where does it go next a tank in the room behind us. Okay, so into a big tanker and then from a tanker it goes? Into a truck tanker. Into a truck tanker, okay, and then from a truck tanker? To a factory. To a factory, and then from the factory? Um, to the shops. To the shops, and that's where you guys get your milk. So basically, when you guys go to a local shop and you just pick the milk off the, off the counter, this is where it all began. And I bet when you guys take your milk off the shelf, you don't even think about where that milk came from but trust me there's a lot going on clearly behind the scenes of what gets your milk to you on the shelves to use in your cereal at home or in your tea or coffee and it's, it's pretty exciting i'll tell you that well guys that's all from me here at the canberg with ollie and phoebe guys thank you for being with us it's been awesome and thank you to all your pets for being with us too it's been it's been great fun and um yeah well We'll catch you on your box just now. Can we do that? Yeah. Awesome. Can we say goodbye? Bye. Bye. Okay, so you're probably wondering why on earth I brought you to a dairy farm out here in the Camberg. Okay, and if you could smell it, you'd really wonder why. Okay, but here is the thing. In a similar way, there is so much that goes on behind the scenes in order to get milk from these cows onto the shelf where you can actually buy the milk to use, okay? And now think of it this way. When we look around at creation, we often just see the finished product. We see the mountains or the trees or the oceans, okay? But we need to remember that there is also a lot that went on behind the scenes in order for creation to be what it is. And that thing, that process behind the scenes is our God, our God, the creator who breathed out the stars, who was here before time began and who created absolutely everything that we can see, even these dairy cows. So think about that and we're going to check something else out in just a moment. Wow guys, after taking a look at that video, I honestly didn't know that there's so much that happens behind the scenes in order for us to find those things on the shelf so that we can buy it. But if you make a comparison to the creation and the beginning of this world, there also had to be things going on behind the scenes. And if you think about it, when we look at the trees, when you look at the sky and all these beautiful things, there had to be a process in how it was made. And that's where our God comes in because he created these things. We're going to be taking a look at a story where we go way back to the beginning and see this process of how God created everything. So take a look at this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. 
And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was an evening, and there was a morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse, and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was an evening, and there was a morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth. And the waters that were gathered around together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit bearing trees, in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was an evening, and there was a morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and for years, and let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth and it was so and god made the two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars and god set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness and god saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day and god said let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm, according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the sea, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, living stock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the living stock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our own likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, over every living thing that moves on earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and you shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life. I have given every green plant for food, and it is so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was good. And there was an evening, and there was a morning, the sixth day. Wow, God literally created everything just by speaking. How incredible is he? Genesis 1, we've just heard, is loaded with reference to how God is our creator. Now, if you're listening carefully, you would have also noticed that there were these two particular words that were used, us and our. Now, you might be thinking, that's a bit confusing. Isn't God one? Is he more than one? Well, it's a great question to ask. Now, what we know about God is this. He's many things, but he also is one God, but three persons. He's the Father, he's the Son, and he's the Holy Spirit. This is what I mean. When you see God the Father in heaven, that's how we, most of us remember him, he's God. When we see God the Son on earth, that's Jesus, he's also God. And when we see the Holy Spirit, that's the, the part of the Trinity that we can't always see with our eyes, we can't always feel with our hands, but when the Holy Spirit is moving and active in our lives, He's also God. 
And this is what I mean. I'm going to read a scripture now and hopefully it brings a little bit more clarity and we get to understand the Trinity a little bit better. It's going to be from Colossians 1 verse 15 to 20. And now it might be a little bit confusing. So after this, once I've read it, maybe it's a good idea to sit with someone a little bit older. Maybe it's your parents, you're sitting at home um, or an, another adult and read it together and discuss it with them. So here we go. Colossians 1 verse 15 to 20. This is what it says. The sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him, in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him, for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. What an incredible God we serve. He's our creator, he's our savior, he is everything we need in this world. Everything that we see, just like the scripture said, that we can see visibly and that is invisible. Things like the wind, things like the air, things like the trees, the birds singing, everything. You and I were created for the purpose of glorifying God and making much of him. He is above everything. We're going to continue learning about him today. Wow, what an incredible God we serve. I don't know about you guys, but my mind has been absolutely blown today. It's so great to be reminded of how big our God is. He created me and he created you and he created everything else in the whole universe. That's pretty cool. One of the biggest reasons he actually created us was to worship him. So let's respond and give him our worship in song. Jesus, I give you my heart, I give you my life, I give you all of me. Jesus, I give you my song, I give you my voice, I give you all of me. Jesus, you are the greatest, you're mighty and you're strong. I lift my hands in worship and sing of who you are. No other name is higher, no other name is true. We lift our voice and sing it out. God, we look to you. Jesus, Jesus, the name that has power. Jesus, Jesus, the name. You are the greatest, you're mighty and you're strong I lift my hands in worship and sing of who you are No other name is higher, no other name is true We lift our voice and sing it out God, we look to you Jesus, Jesus, the name that has power Jesus the name
So today we've learned about our Creator, God, and how He created everything and everyone. And maybe you've heard about this God, but you don't have a relationship with Him. And today I want to pray a simple prayer with you. And after this prayer begins your journey with Jesus Christ. Repeat after me. Dear Lord Father, I know that without you I'm nothing, but with you I'm everything. I pray that you'd come live inside my heart and that I would become a child of God. I pray this in your wonderful name. Amen. Well guys, if you prayed that prayer for the first time today, well done and welcome to the family. It is officially the best decision you have ever made in your whole life. And so I want to encourage you to tell a parent or a leader because it's super important that as we walk out this journey of salvation and of being a child of God, that we do that with people around us to build us up and encourage us. And so tell someone about your decision that you made today. Now, today there has been a lot to take in. I think it's been mind blowing to say the least. But if I can leave you with one thing, it is this, is that God has always been and will always be, that He has been here before time began and is in absolute control of everything. He is the ultimate creator God. He created everything that we can see, including you and me, which is probably the coolest thing ever. Well, guys, that is all from us for today. We will see you next week for a brand new series, which is going to be very exciting. So we will see you there.